When it comes to lunar chronographs, or really chronographs in general, there's hardly a more iconic watch than the Omega Speedmaster. Famous for the Apollo 11 mission to the moon, Omega's extraterrestrial field trip back in 1969 was one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, and one colossal record for urology. While the OG Speedmaster has returned with the prolific 321 movement and a hefty price tag, we're going to talk about all of that in today's episode, and we're going to look at whether or not you know, that's a good buy, or maybe there are some other Speedmasters we should be paying attention to. It's 3.25 p.m., let's get down to business. So myself, like many of you, probably assume that the Omega 321 really got its start around 1969's lunar mission, but you might be surprised to learn that the 321 was already in space as early as October 1962. That's right, according to my research, <laughs> Uh, on October 3rd, 1969, Mercury astronaut Walter Wally Shira orbited the Earth on board Mercury Atlas 8 Sigma 7 mission, and on his wrist, uh, if you look closely, I know it's kind of hard to see, he was wearing a CK2998 Omega Speedmaster powered by that 321 movement. So okay, real quick, let's switch gears a bit. I know when we think of the Omega 321, the Speedmaster kind of gets all the spotlight. That's kind of what we think about when we think of the Omega 321. But if you can find an all original, in good condition, Omega Seamaster 321 chronograph, you're gonna be doing pretty well and you're gonna be paying a pretty penny because that's probably one of the most sought after Seamasters of all time. So what's the deal with the Omega 321 movement or 321 movement, whatever you want to call it? Like, why is it so important and where did it come from? Let's talk about that right now. The Omega 321 was actually based off of the 1942 27 CHRO C12, which was developed alongside Lemania. Now I've mentioned Lemania and Omega's relationship in prior episodes, but just as kind of a little review, a little refresher course, if you will, around this time, Lemania to so and Omega developed a group called SSIH. Now, eventually SSIH fell apart and Breguet actually purchased Lemania and Lemania based movements are actually used in Breguet's high-end chronographs to this day. But before SSIH group broke up, uh, Lemania and Omega spent some time together and developed that 321 movement. Okay, so now that we know Omega's history with the 321 and we understand that movement's lineage, what about this new reissue and its enormous price tag? All right, now unfortunately, I don't have the reissue in the office with me today. I do have another Speedmaster that we're gonna talk about in a moment, but uh, you're gonna be looking at pictures of the new Speedy Professional 321 reissue. This watch has got a 39.7 millimeter case, a matte black dial. It's got faux patina, which is uh, very controversial, a ceramic bezel, a sapphire display case back showing off that highly finished 3 to one movement and a $14,100 price tag. So just like everyone has been asking me for the past few weeks, is this a ripoff? Well, here's what I have to say, okay? This is exactly where Omega has gotten themselves in a little bit of trouble. They do a lot of limited editions, too many limited editions. And people complained about that all throughout 2018, 2019 to now. So guess what? Omega listened to us. Kind of. Because what a lot of people are praising Omega for doing is that with this reissue, hey, it's not limited. That's right, you can buy the stainless steel non-limited Omega Speedmaster with a 321 movement for $14,000, over $14,000 in fact. Because when you figure that if you spend one second online snooping around, you can find a brand new 50th anniversary Omega Speedmaster Man on the Moon for like $14,500 around that same price tag, uh, it makes both watches and the pricing structure look very sketchy and confusing. Because I mean, seriously, okay, here's this very special 50th anniversary Omega Speedmaster celebrating the moon landing for 14.5, or you can get this very non-limited uh, Omega Speedmaster with a 321 movement um, for 14.1. It's a wash at that point, what's the point? Which brings me to my next point, okay? You can spend over $14,000 for the 50th anniversary or over $14,000 for the non-limited 321 reissue, or you can spend a whole lot less for a much better variant. 
I introduce to you, again, because it's been on my channel a few times, my Omega Speedmaster 25th anniversary Apollo 11 man on the moon. Now, uh, I'm not selling mine, okay, but I've done some snooping around and you can find these for like 10,000 and under for a very, very decent condition example all day long. So why do I say the 25th anniversary limited edition is the better purchase out of all of these Omega Speedmasters? Well, this watch does not have that fancy schmancy 321 movement, but it does have the 861 movement, and that's a great movement. In fact, it came right after the 321 movement. And here's my thought process, okay? If you own this watch, and this Omega Speedmaster is going to be your sporty chronograph that you're not scared to wear, you're gonna wear this daily. That means you're probably going to get this serviced at some point, and you don't want it to have a movement that's an absolute headache to find parts for or to service. You don't wanna to have to baby this watch. And when it comes to servicing, and when it comes to the prevalence of parts, the 861 is the way to go. And I get it guys, this Omega Speedmaster 25th anniversary does not have that beautiful display case back, but it does have a whole bunch of very pertinent engravings all over the place celebrating that very special achievement, the Apollo 11 lunar mission. I mean, this is my favorite one here on the side of the case. Apollo 11, 1969 to 1994. And on the back it says, flight qualified by NASA for all manned space missions. The first watch worn on the moon and this one is limited edition 1980 out of 2500. Very, very cool. Also, these watches from the 90s, they do things that kind of mitigate the issues that people have with the reissues. First up, faux patina. This doesn't have it. The patina that's going on with these indexes, all natural, baby. And yeah, might not have that hardy sapphire crystal, um, but this does have the very Omega Hesalite crystal, and I've shown how easy it is to buff out any scratches in a prior episode. In fact, click up here and watch that. Um, but overall, I mean, if you want a very special limited edition Omega Speedmaster Professional with a great movement, uh, you know, Hesalite crystal engravings, uh, celebratory, um, for under 10 grand all day long, this is the much better buy, in my opinion at least. So I get it, I'm sick of Omega's limited editions and although this one technically isn't limited, it's incredibly expensive. Okay, so if you want a true limited edition, very special Omega Speedmaster, you can find them for over $4,000 less that's all I'm saying. Do I think this new Omega Speedmaster 321 is a beautiful watch? Absolutely. Would I spend $14,000 to get it? Nope. But guys, as always, I wanna hear from you. What do you think about this new reissue? Uh, do you really kind of consider it essentially a limited edition or are you okay with it? Uh, 14,000 for that watch. Um, I might be biased because I already own a Speedy Pro, uh, but I think that you guys can easily find other variants that are just as good uh, without that price tag. I mean, come on, the Speedy Reduced is a fine watch. I think it wears very well, especially if you, you have smaller wrists. I think there are other Omega variants that um, will give you just as much fun and are just as iconic, uh, again, without all the little bells and whistles and extra zeros. But as always, leave me that comment. We'll talk about that in the comment section. Guys, thank you so much. If you learned something during this episode, if you had a good time, there's a bunch of ways to support the channel, but the easiest one is to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and watch the content. Check out my Amazon store. There are affiliate links in the description that will help the channel out a bunch when you shop using those links, so thank you. Or you can go visit my personal website, www.thetimetellershop.com. Uh, yeah, guys, had a whole bunch of fun researching more about this watch. I had a whole bunch of fun showing you uh, more about these chronographs that I love so much, but uh, let me let me know. Did you like the episode? Leave me that thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe, share this with other orologists. <laughs> I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. <laughs>